And on this episode of the podcast, Bob and I talk about all the stuff that you've learned by being in quarantine. How can you bring the stuff that's good into the after, into what's next? I hope you dig this episode of the Michigan's Best Podcast. Bob Fish, how are you, my friend? Fabulous, fabulous. Another great day in Michigan. It is another great day, and it's always fun in Michigan when it's $1.99 iced coffee and iced tea. And I don't say that as a commercial as much as I say, uh, you and I have talked about this. If you're a fan of Bigby, there are two holidays on your calendar, per se. There's there's Bigby's birthday, and That's then right. there's do- there's $1.99 iced coffee and iced tea because of, the, of what it symbolizes. And while I, I think this year the symbol might be a little bit... Eh, right. <laughs> it's not quite as <laughs> quite as celebratory as it might be. But, if he, you know, when that happens, it signifies in some ways summer and that your uh, your commute and your traveling changes a little bit. It's a little bit looser. You may come in a little bit later, but that moment feels like summer. And, and I don't know if you guys feel like that, but as somebody who who drinks your product, it feels like summer when that happens. Yeah, I mean, uh, magically the weather turned to eighty degrees and, and iced coffee appeared. You know, right. so or the uh, other way, or is it the other way around? Iced coffee <laughs> appeared, and well, you know, there's so much seasonality to Biggie Coffee. Like in the fall, we have our caramel uh, apple cider, and that's that's always what says you know, fall is here, and so on. So, yeah, iced coffee definitely means that summer is here. Of course, summer looks a little bit different. You know, traditionally, summer meant that school was out. And, um, you know, uh, uh, people had uh, uh, planned vacations and they're going places and they're doing things. And, of, of course, a lot of that has been sort of topsy-turvy uh, with, uh, with, with COVID. And so uh, kids have already been at home and, and you know, any long distance travel has been, uh, has been quashed and, and so on. So there's a new paradigm here. But, you know, the beautiful thing about Big B, and, and I think that's why Big B has done uh, so well during uh, the crisis is that that's one thing that gets to stay normal for everybody. You can go to your Big B, get your iced coffee and know for sure that it's summer. Yeah. And, and you and I, you and I have been sharing these stories all summer long, but I'll share one that, that I haven't shared on this podcast is that it's, it's not just that you get to go and, and have coffee. It, it's deeper than that. And, uh, um, two years ago, three years ago, it was Christmas time. So it wasn't summer, but it was Christmas time. And I was going to go get a gift card at Bigby for my wife. Yeah. And at the store that we're in, you cannot really see the parking lot. So it's not like the baristas could see everybody coming in and, and going. However, when I got out of my car, by the time I reached the door, the drink that I always get from that Big B was waiting for me, regardless of what I was actually ordering. Right. And yeah. so, it, you know, it goes beyond this this commerce. It goes to this relationship. And, and what I think you're, you're starting to see people do. And, and you talked about it in the last episode that being able to have your mother over on a, a deck is a step in the right direction. It's probably not exactly what you wanted or the exact way you wanted to do that, but it's a step in the right direction. And, and I, I think one of the things I wanted to talk about on this episode is when somebody goes through a drive through of, of wherever they go and they get their, you know, their burger that they love or their hamburger that they love, or they go to Big B and get the coffee that they love. There's that, there's that dopamine hit. Like I've, I've done a thing. I've talked to a human and, and on episode two, you guys talked to, you and I talked about how I might be talking to that, that person in the drive through a little bit longer than I normally would because I, I, I miss humans. But throughout all of this, Bob, we have started developing, developing, I should say, these patterns of yeah. change, we're changing the way that we're interacting with people, understanding what things might actually matter in our life and what things don't. And to your point of, of seeking out some normalcy, an iced coffee might be the thing that sets your day on the right path and then allows you to kind of get through in, I don't know a better way to explain this because this can be a bit arduous because you and I both do this from time to time, get through 11 hours of Zoom calls. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that can be a little bit of a grind. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today is we've learned some things. We've been more in contact with people that that matter to us. Um, but typically, when we go through a crisis as a society, that all of that change tends to be fleeting. It sort of fades after time. And we go back to, in this case, we go back to January of 2020 instead of forward to August of 2020. And you're just you're really great at, the, at framing this sort of stuff. And I wondered if I could get your thoughts on some ways in which we can hope of keeping what was great about right now and pulling it through to the future. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, one of the upsides of uh, the whole COVID event and, and the stay at home policies is that we got to hit a reset button, you know, and it, it's like our lives or I'll just speak to my life was just super busy, super chaotic. Uh, we were running really hard and, and I like running like that. And I like having that, you know, that, that kind of uh, stimulus in my life, but it's like, you know, when your garbage disposal gets stuck and then you got to go down under the sink and, and push the reset button to get it going. Uh, that's what happened. You know, I, I had to get down on my knees and, and, and hit the reset button on my, on my garbage disposal. And, you know, this has just been such a great opportunity to evaluate what is what is important, what is not important, what are the habits that I want to create, what are the what are the things I want to give up? And 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 I mean, the world came to a full stop. We'll, we'll never have this opportunity again where the world came to a full stop. And so if we don't leverage this opportunity this time, I can't imagine another moment that we'll have to have this kind of full stop analysis of our lives, right? And it's allowed us to uh, evaluate and look deeper into our personal relationships at home. Uh, it's allowed us to look at our relationships outside of the home, and it's allowed us to look at the relationships that we have in business or, or you know, whether you're a nonprofit, or, you know, whatever sure. your, 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 your business of life is. And, but, you know, your, your ultimate question is, okay, but how do we remember this? How do, how do we, how do we hold on to these quick lessons that we learn and don't drift back to, to where we were? Right. And, and let, let me give you a, a real life analogy to go yeah. with your garbage disposal, right? Yeah. Before you get to hit the reset, you have to stick your hand in there and pull all the garbage <laughs> out, right? <laughs> Totally. But, but the problem totally. with but the problem with that is that a month later you do the exact same thing. You again decide yeah. to shove an entire head of lettuce into your garbage disposal and have to go in and get the wet lettuce out and hit the reset button. And so that's right. You know, how do we make sure that we remember, oh yeah, I probably let's stop putting food in the sink so I stop having to stick my hand in that disgusting contraption and then climb that's underneath right. it and hit a reset button. That's right. Well, you know what the, the solution always for me has been uh, intentionality, right? So one has to be very intentional uh, about the, the things that one wants out of life, right? And, and so, uh, so many of us live uh, basically in our circumstances and we don't work on our circumstances. And so, uh, and, and, you know, we, we talk about that in business, you know, you need to work on your business and not in your business, but you know what? Uh, the parallels between business and, you know, running a business and running your life are, are about the same, right? It, it, it's all the same thing. And so from a personal perspective, we would much rather somebody work on their business or on their life, excuse me, or on their relationships. And the only way you can do that is to be intentional uh, about it. And the only real way to get intentionality uh, is to, is to create a picture for yourself. And so, you know, at Big B Coffee, we've always been really fascinated and um, and interested in the idea of visioning, and that that could literally just be sitting in a chair and in five years and ten years and one year trying to visualize what you want your relationship to be with your partners, to what you want your relationship to be uh, with your family, what you want your relationship to be in our case, like with our owner operators or our customers and so on, and then writing that down. Uh, writing it down makes all the difference in the world because one, there's some personal accountability there for yourself. And two, uh, if you can write it down and then share it with somebody, uh, that can make all the difference in the world. Because once people understand what your vision is, uh, they are more than willing to help you achieve that vision. But if that vision just kind of hangs out in your head and bounces around between your two ears and nobody knows what it is, they can't support you. Yes. And let's let's go back a, a, a step before the visioning, because one of the things about you that I want to keep coming back to, because I, I think, um, number one, I think in most people's life, lives, it's understated. Number two, I'm pretty sure it's where your superpower comes from. If we go back to Memorial Day weekend and you told me this a week ago, you walked 
30 miles in an Correct. entire weekend. And yep. and I I cannot my mother has taught and performed and practiced tai chi for now 3 decades. And and I watched the way that her brain works and it's very similar to the way that your brain works. And so I would say if you're somebody who's listening to this podcast or you've listened to all of them and you're like I I get something from Bob every time he comes on this show. I love this. How do I get there? I'm going to tell you go outside and walk around that is to me because that's the only way that you're going to get to the point where you can free your brain up to get away from the anxiety of something like this or the anxiety of i mean or the anxiety of if we go even to december and you're a retail location who's not hitting their sales goals for q4 the only way to to approach those problems is actually to go the other way to go and be neo from the matrix and slow everything down and it you know, it pulls yep. away a little bit and then you can see the whole picture. But you've got to if it's not walking, it's got to be something else that you sort of stop your brain for a second and then let it reset. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so many people talk about, you know, walking from an exercise perspective or from a physical perspective. And certainly I like the benefits or the, you know, the benefits of, of the physical activity. I think that that's probably good for me and so on and so forth. But where walking really benefits me is in, in, in sort of my mental stability, right? Um, and boy, do we have a lot of inputs in our lives. You know, there's stuff like this and, uh, you know, my phone will be texting over here while we're talking and I can hear my wife downstairs uh, on the phone and soon the UPS driver will show up and be barking. And how do I carry a thought for like mm-hmm. two seconds on that? Really hard to do, you know? So uh, getting outside to me is not so much about the physical uh, benefits, but it's really about the mental benefits. And uh, geez, I won't remember the name of the book, uh, but uh, there's a lot of joy that comes out of being outside and, and being in nature and so on. There's something very rhythmic about it, you know, listening to the wind, listening to the water, to the birds, uh, to the woods, uh, the smells. Uh, human beings were built uh, to be outside, not to be inside. And all, the, all those particular inputs are very harmonious for our brain and really calms it down. And, you know, the, the way, or probably the only way I can get really clear, clear thinking uh, is spending uh, time outside. So, you know, when I say I walk 30 miles, that, that, that's about 10 miles uh, a day. I can't get that through the week because I'm so busy, but I'm sure on a holiday week, I could do 10 a day. And boy, did I, did I solve some major issues. Now, (laughs) this, you know, this next question is a little bit like asking what pencil Stephen King uses, but I want to add, like, obviously the, the walking is meditative in its, in and of itself, but do you meditate on top of that? Or is that sort of all an all in one moment for you? Yeah, for me, it's all in one. I, I, so, you know, a lot of people, there are those dogs meditation. Yes. My, my very happy dog. Um, I've never, uh, been able to, 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 to focus enough to meditate, like sitting on my deck. And, you know, I've tried to do it and I try to do it at sunrise and early in the morning and late in the evening and in the afternoon. And there are folks that can really meditate. And then there are folks that really can't. And I'm in the really can't, you know, I have a, a little bit of a, you know, itchiness about me. And so uh, the combination of the woods, but also of walking, uh, it's, you know, it's like it, it, it occupies enough of my brain. So I, I can't remember if we talked about this or not, but, you know, a lot of folks came to Big B Coffee to work or to study because they they actually needed that background noise going on. Right. So the, the music playing or, or, you know, the special machine going or just the other people and then they could concentrate. And I'm a little bit more in that category. You know, I need the I need a part of my brain to be occupied with all these other things in order to think clearly. Yeah, well, I I equate it to you. You're now seeing uh, as we rethink what an office looks like. You, you're now seeing people that are like, maybe that open office thing was probably not a great idea because all of these people have been at home, sort of in their own world, and they're doing all of this. They're way more productive because they're not interrupted all the time. And you know, I equate the same thing to when you go to a big B. I go to a big B to get work done because I know none of that noise has anything to do with me. It's just no, right. no one is going to ask me a question. I'm just going right. to get to do my stuff. And th- there's a din in the background that actually, to your point, 
hyper focuses me because I can turn, tune all that out and let my that part of my brain go wander and do that. That's right. And you know, like if you know, if I'm writing, I actually need music going in the background. And so, you know, my it's a little old school, but my, my go-to music is the Beatles, and because you know, like every other song is about love, and, and that really kind of works out for me. Uh, but it just <laughs> runs, it runs in the background, you know, um, and uh, it helps me concentrate. So, so I, I need to, to 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 still be doing two things at once when I meditate, and so when when I meditate, you know, just sitting still and and getting my heart rate down and stuff like that. Although I use a lot of meditative practices, you know, from a breathing perspective, you know, I'll, I'll go, you know, four in, hold for four, four out, hold for four uh, to kind of lower my blood pressure and things like that. Not my blood pressure, but my heart rate and so on. So I, there's a lot of, at Bigby, you know, we, in our home office, we start all of our meetings with a meditation. So uh, in our leadership have you, team. Have you, all, have you always done that or is that sort of a newer um, within the last three to four years, uh, we've done that. So, you know, uh, each, each member of the team will do it on a, you know, on a, in a different meeting and it will lead the meditation and everybody's got different ones and they're all good, but it, it's just something that brings everybody sort of centered, uh, to the day, uh, to the moment. Uh, so it's not a true meditation, you know, like we're not sure, getting, but, uh, it's just, you know, people come into meetings and they sit down. Of course, we haven't done that in a long time, but we sit down <laughs> uh, and it's just to let go of all that chattel uh, that, that you brought in with you. You know. So at the beginning of the episode, you talked about this has allowed you and your wife to slow down, right? To kind of yep. relax a little bit. Uh, maybe not relax, but certainly slow down. My question is, do you think you would have ever started the tutorial videos had this event not happened to you? Would have never done it. So um, and and so this th this has been great from that uh, perspective. You know, we do Bean Basics where we, we we look at how to use various pieces of coffee equipment at home, and then we do something uh, called date night cocktails, which just really embraces uh, our love for each other, uh, but also the, the the sort of fun that we like to bring into our lives uh, through that commitment and so on. But um, no. Uh, definitely wouldn't have done that. Um, and definitely glad we've had the opportunity to bring those uh, to the table, both being basics and, and date night cocktails. And so one of the things I think we talked about it in episode two, we talked about you and your wife before this happened, had been traveling the planet, um, in, in search of, of, you know, coffee. And, and I wonder, cause you've talked about for the last two episodes, you've talked about this in the business versus on the business and, and if you don't mind sharing, like what is your, what's your vision at this point to restart that process? What does that look like for you too? Yeah. So, you know, our mission is to, to uh, convert all of Bigby coffee to farm direct coffee and uh, farm direct just takes the brokers out of the system, gets more to the farmer. And then we're looking for farmers that are, you know, treating their people, right. Treating the planet, right. And, you know, making some social investment in their community. And that requires us to go boots on the ground. And so, um, but that work goes on. So now we're, we're not able to execute the boots on the ground component, uh, but we are continuing to network out there uh, to build the farm direct relationships. And, and, you know, it's a little bit like trying to find a needle in a haystack, the, the, the kind of farmer that we're looking for. Sure. Uh, and so it takes a lot of communications. We were doing those at trade shows. We were doing them at, at, at coffee functions where we meet people and then meet other people and so on and so forth. Now that methodology has changed. And, you know, just yesterday uh, I was on a Zoom call with somebody from Costa Rica. The day before I was on a Zoom call with somebody from Uganda and so on. But we're beginning to work through the preliminary parts of whether they would qualify for uh, 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 direct uh, farm direct uh, from from a Big B Coffee perspective, so that the minute that we can get back on a plane, uh, that we can go. And you know, I, I don't remember if I shared this with you. I think I had COVID back in uh, late January. Uh, I was tested using kind of a low quality test. It didn't seem like I did, but uh, both Michelle and I are going to get tested uh, this following Monday. And if we have the antibodies, then then I'm really considering. Uh, deeply uh, getting back on a plane so that I can do these on-site visits because there's nothing more important to me right now than converting all of Bigby Coffee to Farm Direct Coffee. 
And so for, for those of us where that sentence you just said makes a lot of sense to you, may not make a whole bunch of sense to, to a consumer, right? Um, how long would that, will that process, like from the scale of a Big B, how long does it take for you to, and I don't need to know the exact number of farms, like that's sort of in the weeds, right? But like, how long would this, would this process take without COVID? How long would you guys have been traveling to kind of figure this out? Yeah, I mean, to, to sort of, to find one farmer probably takes six months to a year. Um, and that wow. means, you know, preliminarily there might be 20 or 30 farmers that you begin to talk with. And we're real serious about this idea of whether they're treating their workers right or not, you know, and paying them two or three times the national average uh, and, and whether they're treating the environment right. And by that, we mean that they're practicing sustainable uh, uh, farming practices on their farms, be grown using organic methods and so on and so forth. And then this idea that they have a larger social cause means, you know, like a lot of coffee companies will, will come in and, and, you know, check the USDA organic box and, and right. check the fair trade box. But frankly, for Big B Coffee, those thresholds are too low, not too high. And so we're looking for something that's not um, third party driven, that uh, the third party gets a whole bunch of money on this deal and the farmer doesn't really get a lot of money on this deal. And so... All around, we're looking to benefit the farmer that is making an investment in their community. So the, so the last thing is, you know, this idea that they have some social program. Usually it comes down to education uh, in, in, or, you know, providing water or uh, providing a, a, a safe environment uh, for, for their community. But we have to go in and verify that, right? Because yeah, everybody says like, yeah, we do that. And, but right. until you, right. so, so, you know, we, we, we call them out. Uh, we decide to make an initial visit that takes two or three days where we spend time on the farm and then we'll come back for another visit to try to sew up the deal. So in between those two visits, we'll ask for some verification uh, on things and, and so on. But we'll actually live on the farm, talk to the workers, watch the farming practices. You can't hide farming practices. They're either there or not there. Uh, and then, of course, also engage with whatever social commitment they're making to the community. Uh, our goal, my personal goal, is that every owner operator in our system, every barista and every customer in the inn will know the name, the face and the place of every of every coffee that we're getting. And today that doesn't exist. It comes from nameless, faceless, uh, placeless. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. And so we want to unwind that. And we think that that's important. We think it's important to the world and important uh, to, to how we do business. Bob Fish, co-CEO of Big B. Uh, good luck on the test on Monday because um, yep. I'd love to see you get back on, on, on the horse and get the journey going. As always, a pleasure, my friend. Be safe. Stay healthy. We'll talk next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.